the Titans and the Jags are on Saturday evening. And with that, we have the Jags six and a half point favorites over the Titans, a total of 39 and a half or 40 guys. We know this one win and you're in right. Either one of these teams win. They are in the playoffs because they will have won the division. Now there is a very wacky scenario in which the Jags can lose and still get in, but it is so incredibly highly unlikely. We're not going to even go into all that. Let's just keep it to, they have to win to get into the playoffs. Steven, If you look at this on paper, the Jags have been one of the more impressive teams over the last six weeks in the NFL. The Titans, certainly one of the more disappointing teams overall in the last six weeks. They are going to go with Josh Dobbs at quarterback. That being said, this team is a very different looking team this week than they were last week. All of those guys that didn't play last week were all back at practice this week, all practicing in full. Most of them not even listed on the injury report this week as well. So if you're trying to handicap, I guess that's my my very long-winded way of saying, if you're trying to handicap this game off of what you saw last week, I think you're kind of doing it wrong because they are going to get back a ton of key pieces on the defensive side of the ball. And look, we were joking, sign a guy eight days off a of practice squad, come in and start, but it's another week that he's been with the offense here with Josh Dobbs, and it certainly looked like they were more willing to open up the offense and throw the ball around a little bit with him under center. Certainly look better than Malik Willis, I'll say that, but that is not exactly a high bar to clear. Uh, the For me, though, if, if you're backing the Titans this week, it's the Mike Vrabel as a dog, gets his guys up to play, well-coached angle. But I, I can't get there. Uh, mm-hmm. I have Jags division futures, full disclosure, so I have the option here to partially hedge and maybe even middle it with the Titans to cover six and a half. I'm just not interested. Uh, Josh Dobbs last week in that game, 23rd and 24th among all quarterbacks last week in EPA and success rate. So he's better than Malik Willis, but still bad. Expected completion percentage was 62% and he only completed 52% of his passes. Um, Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you. The injury report is cleaner for Tennessee, but it's still not completely clean, Matt. In fact, their top wide receiver, Traylon Burks, was a midweek addition to the injury report, went from limited to DNP Wednesday to Thursday. He's officially questionable. Their right tackle was limited all week with an ankle. He's questionable. Uh, Their safety, Imani Hooker, was also a midweek downgrade from limited to DNP Wednesday to Thursday. He's questionable. Christian Fulton, one of their top cornerbacks, limited all week. He's questionable. So these guys are practicing, but are they 100%? And I guess the one positive would be their top defender, maybe the best player on their team, Jeffrey Simmons. He's listed as questionable, but he looks like he's going to play, but he was still limited all week. So Same with Danico Autry. Um, yeah. So, yeah D- Derrick Henry, of course, back, all the things like that. So all the beat writers are saying they're, they're all play. likely to go. Yeah. yeah, they're going to play, but how healthy, how effective are they going to be considering this defense over the past month was – the worst in the league in drop back success rate and Trevor Lawrence tore up this secondary the first time around. So uh, long winded way of saying I'm not betting on the game. I have Jags futures. I'm going to let them ride and I'm not going to hedge it with Tennessee plus six and a half. Adam, one of the very few games where we have a very cut and dry kind of scenario, the, both of these teams going to go all out. Anyone that can play is going to play because this is the only chance you get that you control to get into the playoffs. So uh, cut and dry game here for us. One of the easier ones, at least for me, of the week to try and handicap. That being said, I think the number's pretty appropriate. I think the total is pretty appropriate in all of this. Like, if anything, maybe a slight a slight lean towards the over. If we believe that there is any sort of upgrade at the quarterback position with Josh Dobbs, like that would kind of maybe be the look for me. There is still a 39 and a half floating out there in this one. Do you have any sort of angle on the side or total? Well, I think to what you're saying right now, Matt, it's a very clear, if you believe it's the favorite, it's the over. If you believe it's the uh, uh, under, it's the dog. Because I think Tennessee is going to have to slop up this game in order to win it. There's no way in which I believe that they can continue to score with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let me go back and give you some stats from a month ago. Coming into the game, these teams played in Tennessee. The Titans were 7-5. and five. The Jaguars were 4-8. and eight. And... If you got these numbers out of Tennessee, Derrick Henry, 17 carries, 121 yards and a touchdown. Ryan Tannehill, 25 of 38, 254, two touchdowns and a pick. 
you probably feel okay if mm-hmm. you're Tennessee, right? Like that that looks a lot like what the Tennessee offense would need to produce to win a game. And they lost the game 36 to 22, and it really was 36 to 14, and they gave up 29 unanswered points mm-hmm. in that game. So I feel you on the idea of the spread being appropriate, that you don't want to undervalue uh, what Tennessee is capable of doing in this spot. However, uh, I just I can't get there on the narrative of Vrabel and, and getting up for a game when there's a talent deficit the way that there is. And mm-hmm. the Jacksonville Jaguars are going a completely different direction right now than Tennessee. So uh, I think I would only decide to uh, tease the Jags down to a pick uh, yeah. If or I should say to a half point uh, in most spots, if you were going to play this, but that's about it. We're always looking for alternate ways to bet games, guys. So I'm just looking here, and would we would we agree that the only way in the world that the Titans keep this thing close is if Derrick Henry actually has a day, right? Like I don't think we think that if Derrick Henry is completely bottled up, that Josh Dobbs is going to lead this team to some miracle, you know, whatever. Like if we go, if we believe that narrative, like Derrick Henry a hundred a hundred yards or more is plus one thirty. You're actually getting plus one thirty as opposed to laying minus one ten and whatever. Like I can't imagine a scenario in which Derrick Henry is completely bottled up in this game and yet the Titans still keep this thing close because it seems like the only path to really keeping this close would be Derrick Henry having a day here. So again, just kind of alternate ways you can look at maybe betting this game because uh, you know, you can tell a story and if that story plays out, maybe get you a plus one thirty there on Derrick Henry to have a, have a big game, but man, I'll, I'll be curious watching this one though, because I, I do want to know if the Jags, if the Jags are, are real, you know, like, I mean, cause this is it, right? Like you, this, this is the test. Is it not? I mean, it's like, like you, you win, you're in, you've been one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Don't go lay an egg. Matthew, right? Matthew. Like, yeah. They are real and they are spectacular. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, I know. I know. I really do like this team. I really do. 